Okay, as promised, we've got the Greg Norman interview. This was on uh, Sunrise this morning, 2nd of November 2020. So let's have a look. Uh, apparently Greg Norman's a big fan of Donald Trump, which I didn't realise, so uh, let's have a look. Now let's go back to Nat in Washington, D.C. Thanks, guys. Well, Greg Norman is one of thousands of Australians living in the US during what's been a really polarising election campaign. He's also a Donald Trump supporter, and he believes a wave of silent voters uh, is going to get his mate elected for an... So that's so interesting, because I just had... If you've watched my video previously, I'll put a link up over there. <laughs> Um, yeah, the previous uh, person, Wayne Allen Root, actually said that, that there's a silent major there's a silent wave of voters that are going to support Donald Trump. So Greg Norman's saying the same thing. It's very interesting. Another four years. Uh, Seven News US Bureau Chief Ash Mullaney sat down with the great white shark. And Ash, you got an insight into what makes Donald Trump tick. Yeah, now, and it was fascinating to sit down with Greg Norman and speak about the state of America because he's called this place home for four decades mm. now and he says he's never seen a time quite like it. But he believes Donald Trump has given a rudder to millions of Americans and that he can pull off a come-from-behind victory. Hello. From playing golf and late nights talking golf with Bill Clinton to playing political peacemaker after Donald Trump and Malcolm Turnbull's testy first call, Aussie golfing legend Greg Norman has been on first name terms with US presidents for decades. So he's, he's, he's played golf on both sides of the spectrum there with uh, Clinton, uh, the Bushes, um, also Trump of course. So you, you wouldn't think he'd have a bit of any bias. He's, he's seen the whole the whole uh, gamut and uh, as you'll see later on in the interview actually uh, has some uh, good words to say about Biden as well. I'd love to know what's Trump like out on the golf course, how's his game? Actually he's got a pretty good uh, golf game, he's got the reason why even at his age he's still got good body rotation so his flexibility is there. See, that's very interesting because that's one of the things that the Democrats like to say to the you know, he's oh, they get they do the old um, I was walking down the ramp, which he, he basically said you know the ramp was slippery and he has like you know leather shoes on his with the soles as you know with leather soles they're quite slippery, so it was just you know making sure that he wasn't going to slip, but uh, you know they they get onto it, so it's good to see uh, Greg Norman you know uh, who's who's uh, better to uh, um, uh, what he could critique. Uh, Donald Trump's golfing and Greg Norman, you know, amazing golfer. And according to Norman, a good chance of being re-elected as president. I just feel confident he's going to do it. His gut mm. instincts proved right in 2016 Don't when his longtime friend scored an unexpected victory. Now Norman says what Trump's delivered for millions of Americans will be enough to secure him a second term. They actually can see value, they can see security, they can see uh, um, economics, they're getting they're getting things that they've never really had before. The Australian businessman whose successful ventures range from golf course design to Wagyu beef is unashamedly a Trump supporter. I've seen the resurgence back into the golfing world because of what he's done and implemented here in the United States. He also defends the president's handling of the pandemic. So you can't lambay somebody for taking and making decisions the way he had to make them for 330 million people. That yeah, well, that, that's a that's a big one, isn't it? Because um, I see I see where Trump Trump was trying to because um, you don't want panic. You got 330 million people in America. You don't want uh, outright panic. And um, what we're seeing in Australia is only what have we got seven states. And uh, even when we shut down one state and and you know all the border restrictions and you can't go into one state. You know, it causes absolute chaos. Imagine if that happened in America where, you know, you'd have little hot spots, you know, close down that state, can't travel there, people are stuck there trying to get back to their family. It causes, I'm telling you, it causes absolute chaos. So, um, you know, even a, <laughs> a supercomputer wouldn't be able to work it out, how to, how to effectively stop the virus. You know, it's, it all comes, to, for me, it all comes down to personal responsibility and, uh, 
you know, if you think there's a there's a cluster in your in your community, just hey, just try and stay at home and and social distance, wear a mask, uh, you know, hands hygiene, everything like that. So, you know, it's you can't you can't rely on on the president to uh, to uh, determine how you're going to live your life. That's for sure. Because uh, I'm telling you, in Victoria, in, in Australia here. They were having real, real troubles with uh, people just... I think they were locked down for like months. How many months was it? Quite a few months. And they were getting so sick of the lockdown. And uh, a lot of protests, a lot of people defying orders, taking, like opening up their shops uh, in defiance and and um, taking the government to court and everything. So, yeah, it just... And that's just seven states. Imagine with 50. <laughs> He was trying to protect. I guarantee you Joe Biden or anybody else who was the president of the United States would have had to done exactly the same thing because he would have had the same scientists around him guiding him in the same direction. And if Joe Biden were to win? Look, I like Joe Biden personally. I really do. At the end of the day, you know, I don't fear Joe Biden. I just fear the people around Joe Biden that, that might... If he, if he becomes president, it might sway him into a direction. Regardless of the result, Norman is adamant this is a defining moment for America. All the disruption with some of these democratic cities and the rioting and all that stay, taking place, is that going to get any better or is that going to get any worse? I don't know. He's optimistic. Actually, I've got, I've got to comment on this because this I found completely disgusting how... Look at look at the mob dead surrounding this woman and demanding that she put a f fist up and say you know Black Lives Matter and it's like come on man, <laughs> do a joke. I need I need my I need my rebounds. Come on man, and it's like you know that's just how's that how's that freedom? You know, America is like meant to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. How is surrounding a person like this and demanding demanding you have the same thought process as them? And to comply like that, that's... <laughs> oh, my God. That really, that really triggered me, that one. Mm. America can overcome its divisions and be great again. It's a home away from home until he can return to Australia. That's my helicopter coming in to pick me up. <laughs> Good for some. <laughs> Greg Norman heading back to his home at Jupiter Island where he will be watching those election results coming in closely like the rest of us but perhaps a lesson that was that we all underestimated Donald Trump in 2016 and it seems Greg yep. Norman thinks it would be unwise to do the same this year. Yeah, great story. Thank you, Ash. And Mon and Koshi, also a lesson in stereotyping people, isn't it, that story? Yep. I don't quite understand it. What did... did uh... Natalie Barr think that Greg Norman was a Democrat? I'm not too sure about that. Uh, there's, a, there's a great interview that Nat, Natalie Barr did with uh, Mike Tyson. And um, you know, the reason that I stop my videos like this uh, all the time is uh, YouTube demanded I do commentary over news footage, even though news footage is covered under fair use, blah, blah, blah. They want us to, our uh, YouTubers, to do their own commentary, make it a unique piece. Uh, that's why I keep stopping and doing my commentary over it. I know it annoys a lot of people. Um, had the same issue with the Mike Tyson video. Uh, when I got my channel back, I deleted a hell of a lot of footage. Uh, I'll be slowly putting all that back up as well, so you can enjoy some of the some of my uh, better videos that I had uh, a couple of years ago when uh, I was allowed to have them up until uh, YouTube changed all the rules. So um, yeah, interesting election. Uh, there was another. There's another Greg Norman video as well. Um, what I want to do is I'll put I'll put that on next, and because um, there's more to the interview. He's talked about a couple other things as well. So I'll, it might repeat a few things in this interview, but there was more in the other one. So I didn't want to sort of try and mission mash them. I'll do two separate videos. Okay, guys. So uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.